fact in such a presentation is that a lot of people have already talked about a lot of the things I'm going to talk about. So I think what I'm going to do is, again, put things in context. And when John talked about this presentation tonight, it was emerging tech. And I started thinking, what is emerging tech? Well, you know, it's all these things that we hear about. Well, today we heard about blockchains, and we hear about AI, and we hear about um, virtual reality. In my world of networking, we hear a lot about 5G, and you know, it's going to save the world. We hear about edge computing and edge networking. Um, we hear about all these things as if they were all a religion. We hear about them as if they were separate entities. AI will save the world, and 5G will save the world. Okay, who will? In fact, what I would like to know is how many of you think that all these things are separate? Well, maybe don't raise your hands, but I hope that in the next eight minutes that I have to talk, that I'm going to convince you that all these things are part of the same thing. And that we cannot realize the benefits of AI or the benefits of 5G or the benefits of VR and AR without looking at them as a system, without looking at them as things that you integrate together. And it's late. And so supposedly, because it's late, maybe our brains are getting tired. So to make things very simple, let's imagine that all these things are technology building blocks. Each one of these blocks is kind of cool, but it doesn't give you much. It's actually much more interesting when you build things with them. And so this is what, again, I think in my experience, has been absolutely challenging and absolutely fascinating, is actually creating these complex systems by using all these emerging technology new things that are available. And because we need examples, I decided to go to some examples about it. Who, what, and why are we going to use these things? Who are going to use them? What are we going to do with them, and why are we doing it? And so, again, some examples. Democracy and content distribution. Actually, it's interesting because I think the, the person from M not only left, but this is actually a very good one. More and more people are recognizing that decentralization of content distribution is actually not very good for the co producers. Um, they have to deal with bureaucracies. They have to deal with people who actually take their money and don't pay much back. Um, you want to enable new monetizing models. But think about it. Will you be able to do that only with blockchains? Obviously not, because the blockchains are giving you the trust. Somebody trust, talked about trust in blockchains. They're giving you the trust to create that community. Cool. Now, you need to distribute that content. Where are you going to distribute that? Well, you need computers, you need networks, you need storage. And this is what the edge computing does. It actually takes that information from the big data centers and the big content distribution networks and bring it back to where you are or allows you to update from where you are to that data center. And again, why would you need artificial intelligence? Aha. Well. If you have this distributed content distribution network, you need to know where to locate these different cache and these different edge elements. You need to know what the trends are. Well, obviously, I'm, I'm a French Canadian. So somebody was talking about, you know, I know I, I didn't come from Montreal. I, I live there too. But I'm probably the only person in my neighborhood who watches. French Canadian television. So putting a cache for me would probably be useless. But there's probably a lot of people in my neighborhood who are probably interested in a certain type of content. And if I was a producer or a content producer, I'd like, if my content is that content, I'd like it to be located there. I would also like to know trends. Maybe I am a trendsetter. And because I'm such a trendsetter, everybody's going to start watching French Canadian television because they live in my neighborhood. So 
AI could actually see that people are starting to think, hey, there's good stuff happening there. Why wouldn't we locate the, the, the cash there? So and again, to create that democracy and content distribution, you need all these building blocks. You need the computers, the cash, the artificial intelligence, and the blockchains. And if you want to go further, if you want to do wireless, obviously you need also 5G. So this is one example. Another example which has been getting a lot of attention because IKEA started thinking that they were going to do AR to finally show us how to build these things. So you would like to enable these virtual designs. You would like to provide some tactile feedback. Um, maybe not in building IKEA things, but maybe in building other things that have vibrations or something. You would like to know it's working. There's a motor in there. And if the motor is not running, well, nothing's working. And you would like to, again, provide distributed trusted expertise. Why? Well, I, I don't want somebody to tell me how to build my IKEA thing and it falls over my head because I did not build it right. Because the person who sent me the, um, the information was actually mimicking as a um, trusted IKEA person. So the building blocks, we're coming back to the same thing. We need this edge computing. Why? Because we want to locate that information on how to build the things close to me. We want to be able to connect, again, the information from the original video that showed you how to build it to the current AR, which is, again, local to you because that AR may have your language. Again, language is a big issue. I think nobody raised that today, how language is important if you want to do all these augmented reality uh, information. So again, you need that localization. You need this AR functionality. And now we're getting into the AR. So this AR doesn't exist on its own. It exists because it is connected to that task that you want to achieve. And you still have your blockchain and your smart contracts. Why? Because again, you want to be trusted. You want to trust the person who's giving you the information. And you may want to have a smart contract. Why? Because you are maybe now part of that community. And you want to be able to maybe at one point eventually be paid for your help or to be able to pay for the help you're getting. Now again, pieces that will get together. Another one. Well, this is actually the easy one. The autonomous vehicles. Everybody's talking about that. Well, obviously, there's the self-driver's insurance, they, a ton of information that is going to be gathered by all these, these vehicles so that the insurance companies can actually detect if there was an accident, what made it happen. This means terabytes of information that will need some form of local data processing and data reduction because you cannot move that amount of information all over a large network. So here again, you have this edge data acquisition and analysis. These things are all about artificial intelligence. There is no self-driving car that doesn't use artificial intelligence and machine learning to know what it's doing. And there is an element of, um, I would say, augmented reality because some of these self-driving cars are also going to use the dashboards to have, to have the person who's inside the car having some kind of an experience of what it is to be in the car. So again, building blocks to create something better. And the last one was actually very interesting. This was uh, suggested to me by the reviewer who um, helped me create the last version of this. And it was something that, strangely enough, was one of the early ones I had thought about. Uh, the series Frontline in um, uh, the U.S. and actually in Boston, uh, they're, they're participants in uh, some work at MIT where I was also a collaborator, and their idea was to create immersive journalism. And so that instead of just watching what is happening in an Ebola village, you could actually walk through it. And it works also for more than journalism, but this one was, well, it was during the Ebola crisis, and this one was to create empathy, to improve our knowledge, of how this disease goes around. Um, and also, like, expertise in gaming, 
uh, in, in tourism. So your friends in Italy, you would like to have the same type of experience, or maybe you could meet your friend in VR. Well, <laughs> let me tell you that computing's not there. And then, obviously, this VR functionality, which cre needs these 360-degree cameras and everything. So again, it's the technology, but it's pieces that come to it. And the blockchains, again, and the smart contract are for the trust and to be sure that the people who are giving you that information are trying to influence you in the wrong direction. So what I hope I have succeeded in doing is telling you that in order to build these beautiful castles that maybe are going to be the next generation media experiences, the next generation experiences that are going to help us in our lives. I didn't mention medicine, but it's also another one, telemedicine. The fact that we're going to be able to age gracefully by taking advantage of all that information, it's all about integration and hopefully great impact. Thank you.